Hello and welcome to The Game Plan. I'm Paul Jodka, joined by former England hard man James Graham. Thanks for joining us, James. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's going to be a day where we talk about three big name forwards who are switching clubs for the 2024 season. And let's start with a Premiership winner who is coming to the Roosters in Spencer Lenu. James, one key aspect of Lenu's game is his leg drive. Talk about what makes him so hard to bring down. Yeah, absolutely. So if we'll see on a couple of these examples, if the defenders don't approach the, the tackle, together he will maximize the opportunity so you can see here the Warriors players are not in a straight line together so if you're not having simultaneous contact on a guy like Spencer Lenny he's going to make you pay for that so his body shape and all the training that he that he does he looks to take advantage of this let's watch this in action once he initiates the contact he's not looking to find the floor he's looking to gain extra meters for his attacking team and then again, a big game against the Parramatta Eels back in 2022 and comes on the path from the bench. Yeah, well, what he does in this situation, he isolates the smaller man in Reed Marnie. So obviously the middle, it's a pretty tough place to gain momentum and see how he squares him up and just carries him further through the line. It fractures the defensive line. If you watch the Parramatta Eels players, they're now in scramble mode. And this is the advantage of a player like Spencer Lenu and his leg drive in any pack of forwards. And here he is again, this time coming one pass off from the halfback. Yeah, well, this is really intelligent play from Spencer Lanyu because he backs his speed and his ability. So the South's defensive line there, it's Lachlan Ilias here, hasn't moved up. Now, for all intents and purposes, most front rowers, it's not an issue for South's right edge. Yeah. It, it doesn't, not, nothing will manifest from that. But what Spencer Lanyu, with his footwork, and his speed and his ability to recognize somebody having a playoff, he'll get himself into that space. He's one off the rook. I think if you go back even further, he may have seen this and caught the and called that off Nathan Cleary. So the short side doesn't move up. I think Spencer Lenny wants the ball, recognizes that and gets it. And let's have a look at what he does because he can be so devastating and this is no coincidence to the power and the training and all the work that he puts in. Look at the fracture that he does to, to South's defensive line. He has them backpedaling now off a play that would have been designed to come out all the way to the edge. What smart players do, like Nathan Cleary, they use players like that up, and then they have the same shape again, and they go at them, but this time at a much more fractured defensive line, coming off the back foot, as opposed to the first time that play was set up, the defensive line was ready and set. Yeah. And I don't think we would have seen the same result from Stephen Crichton had it not been for Spencer Lenu fracturing the defensive line and having South Sydney on the back foot. That's what he could bring to the Roosters. And if you look when he gets close to the line, he's equally as dangerous and it leads to points. Yeah, well, let's just have a look at this try. And for the, for the viewers there, it just appears all strength and all power and all leg drive like we've already spoken about. So here we are. This is really intelligent play. What Spencer Lenu does here is he recognizes that Bulldogs fullback Matthew Dufty is there in his illusion. He's going to vacate that space and that position and go and, and assume that the ball is going to come out wide because look at Penrith here. They've got a lot of their key indicator players. So they've got Cleary, they've got Luai, um, Dylan Edwards out the back. So a lot of their key indi indicator players are here. So for all intents and purposes, it looks like the shift. This is where the ball is coming. Billy Army kick out as well. What Spencer does, he recognises that Matt Dufty is going to vacate that space and this is a very confident young man that has the ability to overcall and get the ball from Abby Corris out. These are the subtle things that footballers bring so he would have to call for this ball because you want the ball in Nathan's hands, we yeah. see what he can do. So Spencer's got the confidence and backs his own ability, sees that Dufty is going to go and goes straight into the space that Matt Duff Dufty vacated. Here we are again, this is a, a little bit more simple. What he does, he isolates Tyrell Sloan. Tyrell Sloan, the fullback of the Dragons here, he'll come out of the rook, he'll take this space next to Jack DeBone and next to the rook. And Spencer Lenu recognizes that Tyrell Sloan is on the ground, gets up, and the last thing anybody wants to see is Spencer Lenu short, steaming onto the ball. You've got to put your body in front and and almost pray that he makes a mistake <laughs> or somehow you manage to get underneath the ball and stop him getting that ball onto the ground. Smart, intelligent football. Recognise that it's a weaker defender. We saw him take advantage of Reed Marnie in one of those earlier plays. Mm. He takes advantage of people in that line that he knows he can get over and get through. And even though you've got some fantastic footballers in the Penrith team, 
all tries. They all yeah. add up to the same. Yeah. They're all four points. And when yeah. he usually scores, yeah. the conversion's pretty easy. But on this particular incident, he scores over in the corner here. This is at Magic Round after a long line break from the Penrith Panthers. And again, think of some of the key indicator players that Penrith have. And usually after a break in this situation, what you would see is those key half players get the ball and shift the ball to space over on this end of the field where players are still in retreat mode. That's the usual course of action yep. when it comes to how to deal with a line break from an attacking point of view when your outside backs have been chased down but Spencer Lenyu just steps up in this situation what is a front rower even being doing there he should be <laughs> back 40 50 meters having a break and letting these guys take over letting the ball go to Dylan Edwards who's got his hand up saying give the ball to me <laughs> Spencer Lenyu for some strange reason is up there in support and again he recognizes the smaller, weaker spot defenders. I think this is Wade Egan at the time, and he just powers his way through. It's a little bit more of a difficult kick for Nathan Cleary in this situation, but it counts all the same. It doesn't matter if it goes over to Edwards. That's a fantastic little bit of awareness and great ability to keep up with the line break, not yeah. just thinking, oh, my outside backs are gonna take care of the job now. Had some he senses outside backs. Well, what he does, he <laughs> senses an opportunity. Yeah. And that's a great skill to have. And I think the Sydney Roosters, in the they bring Spencer Lanyu for many reasons. Yeah. But those sort of cheap tries, yeah. they can be so valuable in a in a big contest where things are ebbing and flowing yeah. and it's difficult to get points. Sometimes those cheap ones, they happen quite regularly in those tense, those tense close games. We'll talk about that fact because Trent Robinson, obviously, he's got Jared Warrior Hargraves, but, you know, probably at the latter end of his career, safe to say now, Spencer Lenny, that similar style, it's the aggression. Talk about that, what he's going to bring from an aggressive point of view to the Sydney Roosters. Yeah, well, we're going to see some pretty effective um, aggression in defence here from Spencer Lenny, but it's also about presence as well. We all know Jared is is the heartbeat and the real alpha and leader of that Roosters team. He is slowly transitioning to less minutes. Um, he is an older statesman now. Yeah. And I think him and Spencer, they've got some beef to sort out <laughs> day one of preseason, week one of preseason. Hopefully that's all done and dusted behind now. <laughs> but Spencer's gonna assume that role that Jared is gonna vacate. And I think it'd be interesting to see how Spencer Lenu goes from the interchange forward at the Penrith Panthers to ultimately, I think he will become a starter, whether it will be midway through this season or into season 2025. That's, a re that's the role that he's been bought there for, to be that enforcer, to be that type of person that when you're on the field, so when I played against Jared, I needed to know where he was at yeah. all times because the fear factor. Yeah. What I know he's capable of doing. Yeah. So this is the type of role, the psychological warfare between front rows and between middle f groups of middle forward packs going yeah. against each other. You look for their alpha male, and when you've got Jared starting the game and Spencer coming on, or vice versa, whatever, whatever Trent Robinson and his coaching staff decide to do, this is a very, very dangerous combination. He wasn't afraid here to take on the alpha is going to be his teammate, because that's uh, Lindsay Collins there. He Yes, it is, and as well, he recognises it's his teammate from the year before, Isaiah Yeo, that likes to do that skip across and bring players underneath. So if you just watch this, watch the footwork of Spencer Lanyu here. He goes really hard, and then he realises who it is, and he goes, I know what Isaiah Yeo is trying to do to me here. He's trying to make me follow him. Just watch his footwork. He goes really hard and then slows up because he anticipates the drop. That's really intelligent football. In a test match, to have the awareness to take that into consideration because usually you just go and assume that someone's going to trail and follow you in and make that tackle. But he knows, he knows who it is. So he's obviously a very intelligent footballer like we see with the, the moving of the fullback. That doesn't happen by accident. That's hours and hours of tape and recognising where he can gain a competitive advantage. And he's a guy that the opponent's probably, if you're coming in taking a carry early in the set, you probably don't want to be running at, at Spencer. No, absolutely not. We'll just look at that. The head rocks back every single time into collision. We see what he can do with his power with the ball, but he's equally effective in defence as well. Great stuff. Thanks so much, James. Pleasure. For all your game plan news and analysis, go to nrl.com.